Hi everyone, I'm back in case you are still here. So we are now doing the monthly templates. So I just showed you how to edit the annual templates. We're going to do monthly template templates. There are five of them in here. This time, I believe, yeah, Crowdcast is in theory working. So um, let's go ahead. I wanna show you the files that you're going to get. So you're gonna get five different folders plus the JPEGs just like last time. So the JPEGs are just those images that you can then make mock-ups of or you can go ahead and use those in Canva. Um, and remember, just like I said before, you cannot edit these in Canva. Uh, the only other program that you can possibly edit these in is, um, Adobe, uh, not Adobe, Affinity Publisher. Um, and I just realized I'm talking about a screen that I'm not sharing. So let me change that. <laughs> All right. So let me show you. These are the files that I was talking about. So over here, these are uh, the five different files that you're going to get for monthly. And you'll notice that Fuchsia Metallic gold metallic and violet metallic all match those uh, annuals that I just showed you. So they were meant to go together in case you had a fuchsia planner that you wanted to create and you wanted to have the matching annual calendars to go with it. So um, also there is a rose gold and I know what you're thinking, is this the same rose gold as the one from the rose gold collection? No. It's a different one. Like I said, there was like a period where I was just super into two things. I was really into rose gold and I was really into calling everything I created girl boss, girl boss sheets, girl boss planner, girl boss notepad, girl boss course. Like it was a little confusing and I'm thankfully over that. I will not make that mistake again. But because of that, you have some older products where people are like, I don't understand. I thought I bought the girl boss sheets, but I see this girl boss planner. So. I will stop calling things that. So we do have some legacy things in there uh, that are named that. And then we have the monthly desk pad. So this one is very exciting because this monthly desk pad is actually an eight and a half by 14. So that annual uh, wall calendar was eight and a half by 11, but the monthly desk pad is eight and a half by 14. So this does need legal size paper, but I do feel like as a printable legal size paper is very easy to obtain and something that we were all familiar with. I mean. At one point or another, someone has had to feed legal paper through a planner in their lifetime, I think. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm older, but I think the newer generations probably don't print as much. Maybe they're all electronic, but I definitely, and I feel like I'm more electronic now, but even then, I did print out things by eight and a half by 14. I'm just going on and on now. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go into how to edit these. So the first one, the first three, the fuchsia, the gold, and the violet all look exactly the same and they all work the same. So I'm just gonna show you how to edit one of them. Um, and again, I'm gonna do view over print preview so I just don't see those weird boxes because I have had people write to me and they're like, I don't understand there are these, these weird boxes everywhere. It's just the way Adobe InDesign works. So there are no links on this folder. These are actually just rectangle boxes. I literally just laid on top inside of the planner. Um, I really like stripes, I still do. Uh, I think it looks cute, but if you wanna change this, um, you can call this something like, the fabulous planner. Uh, you can call it the fabulous. If you're in Europe, you can call it a diary. I feel like that's weird to call anything a diary as an adult, but I think that's what they do in the UK. Um, so over here, uh, same thing as before. So if you want to change any of these fonts, you can just select the box, make sure the type tool is selected on the left, and then you can change it to anything. Like I was saying, Poppins is like my new favorite go-to font. Oh, it's too big. So whenever you change a font and then the text box is blank, that is only because the text is not able to fit in that text box. So it's because a 50 in Poppins is very different from a 50 in Dido versus a 50 in Times New Roman versus a 50 in Arial. They're all different. So all you have to do is go to the selection tool. You can double click any of these boxes around here and it will just kind of, um, center it for you. Now it's a little close to that line that I have at the bottom. So I might just tap this up a couple uh, moves with the arrow keys. And I kind of like how it is there. So I'm going to leave that over here. Uh, maybe now this is I think I was telling everyone this is the sleep lesson font. I don't know why it's not showing up in the list. But um, you know, I think it was on sale. If you don't like that, you can change to something like 
Moonstone or, you know, I try to do, I usually try to do a combo of a regular serif or sans serif along with the script font. But if you're more like, you know what, I don't really like that. I'm just going to go uh, something else, like all scripty all the way. Uh, you could do something like, it's another font. Um, Ariel. <laughs> okay. I guess that's pr pretty boring, but that's like the go-to. All right. Ariel is way too big for all the space here. So it's just getting all like smushed together. So I would actually drop this down to a 40. Um, I wouldn't even try to use the arrows to bump it down because it was so like enormously huge. And so I changed it to a 20. It kind of fits there. I'm kind of happy with it. Obviously it's too high. So I would move this so it is lower. And again, I usually just eyeball things. You can definitely use this tool up here, the ruler, and you can drag a line down here. Um, so this is a two page spread. Usually when I drag it in the middle, it does both, but, um, and then you can just kind of line this up wherever you want. And then you can put the, the letters so that they're lined up to the margins. Um, same thing, you can change all of these colors over here. You can select the text over here. We could change it to, um, what did I say my new favorite font is? Uh, we could change it to Moonstone. We could make it something fun, right? Uh, you don't have to necessarily make it something legible if that's not what you want. You could do something different and fun with it. Same thing, you can change all of these numbers here to a different font as well. Uh, you can change it to anything you want. You can do another Moonstone. Um, oh, those are individual boxes. Oh, I guess maybe Moonstone doesn't have, you know, it has a font. Well, let's see. And I'm just going to say, because this is older. Oh, yeah, that's that's really hard to read. Um, uh, these are, I don't think there are character styles set up for this. So let's look at character styles. And again, this is one of my older um, ones. Oh, maybe there's a character style. No, let's see. Let's highlight um, a day of the week. Oh yeah, there are character styles for days of the week. So you could make one change over here. Um, well, those we've already, we've broken the styles, but if I double click this and I change this to, uh, let's say instead of railway, I could change this to real tough. There we go. Oh, that is really ugly. Let's <laughs> change that to recherche. Um, I could change the color even. So Maybe I would just want to make these blue and I don't want to make them metallic. And now they're changed on the entire document. So I don't have to worry about changing them. So I guess I do have, I do have uh, styles. So you're good. Um, gold numbers. That's probably not something. Let's see. Oh, maybe I can change all the numbers at once. Let's see. Character colors. What did we say? We were doing blue. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Everything's now changed. So I lie. I did put character styles in here. So you can easily change these pretty quickly by doing character styles. And the way to figure out if something has a character style is simply highlight it. And then it'll show up here on the list um, if it has a character style. So this has a little plus to it. So a little plus usually means it's broken. Like I've done something to override the original character style. Uh, so let's try this one over here. Same thing. It looks like I broke it. I've done something else. So when you change those, it might not necessarily work on those, but the other ones, it should be fine. So again, like I said, it looks exactly the same for the gold metallic. Uh, gold metallic looks exactly the same in that it's the same layout and it's just that it's a different color. Uh, over here, the same thing with the violet metallic and it's the same as the other ones, but it is a different color. So this is using obviously the purple metallic. So those are all of your metallic monthlies. And then we also have a rose gold monthly because I just can't help myself with making more rose gold things. Um, so this one has a little bit of a different cover just because it's rose gold. So there wasn't really a way to make stripes, but it has the same look and feel as the other ones. It's a two page monthly spread. It's just that it is using rose gold instead of those metallic colors. Um, and I think the fonts are different. Let's see what font is that. It's Gotham. And this is Texta. 
I believe Texta is a um, a free font through Adobe Typekit. So if you have Adobe Creative Cloud, I hope you know that you have access to tons of free fonts. In fact, I'm embarrassed to admit, I frequently buy fonts that I already could have used for free because I'm just so not used to checking Adobe Typekit. So if you do not know how to use that, I won't go into a lesson here. I have a tutorial on my channel that shows you how to look up Adobe Typekit fonts and then how to use them inside of Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, anything, any Adobe product, you can use any of those free Adobe Typekit fonts. And they're growing every day, so they have more and more stuff. But some of the fancier premium fonts like Sleep Lesson probably aren't in there, uh, but you can find a lot of different things in there. All right, so these are the first four of the monthlies. They all basically look the same. They kind of work the same. The only thing that's different is the colors. Now, the new one is the desk pad that I came out with last year. And this one, just like I said, is an eight and a half by 14. And let's just confirm that. We'll just go to file, document setup. And yep, there we go, eight and a half by 14. Um, so over here, you're going to see that this has a pattern. You can change this too. It doesn't have to just say monthly desk pad. Um, it could say something like fabulous desk pad or whatever you want it to say. Uh, and you can change if you don't wanna put 2022. You can put something else. You can add your own logo, everything else. Um, so over here, uh, you have one page per month. So if you've never seen these monthly desk pads, they're meant to look like tearaway sheets. So you tear one sheet away, then you put the next one down. You tear another sheet away, then you put the next one down. So the biggest question I always get is where do I get these made? Um, so two things. One, you can definitely sell these printables. And that's the reason it's eight and a half by 14, because I do believe that everyone has access to legal size page paper. And I should say in the US, I think the definition of legal size paper in the UK is different. Um, but this will work for the majority of people who are probably in your audience. Now, the other thing is that to get that sticky tape on the top, there are two things. One, you could just do it at home by yourself. So there's, a, what is that? I think it's called Mod Podge is like a tape, a sticky tape that once you could, you have them together, you can put all the pieces together. You could put a thicker chipboard on the back or a piece of cardboard like paper uh, to kind of be the base for it. Another option is to just find a local printer. I called about four or five different printers here in San Diego and they all said they could do it. Um, <clears throat> It wasn't that ch uh, cheap. So, you know, again, if you're not trying to do these in bulk, you probably don't want to do these. Fervante can definitely do tearaway pads. That is my number one recommendation for a third party vendor uh, for printing. And so there is an entire tutorial on my site on how to use Fervante. But same thing. The, the only thing, I shouldn't say the only thing, there are many things you can change on this uh, particular um, page. But let's say we go to the selection tool. This image right here, this back image, uh, that's actually on the master. So if you don't like um, if you don't like this background here, you'll have to go to master pages. And if you don't know where master pages is, all you have to do is go to window, make sure pages is selected. And you'll see this kind of like, as soon as you hover over it, your mouse changes to two arrows. It's kind of like an invisible line between the pages that you see in the document and the master pages. So always think of master pages as like um, headers or footers for your file. And so over here, you are going to see the, um, that B master page is applied. So when I roll over this particular file, I can see that B has been applied. There's a big letter A. Um, so it's really easy. It tries to help you out. So if I go to B to that master page and let's say, you know, I really don't like this style. I can just take it and I can delete it and replace it with something else. What would I replace it with? I'm not really sure. Let's go ahead. Um, what's another, I feel like I've downloaded a ton of different things. Um, but let's say we wanted to make this blue because that's my theme for today. Uh, blue background. And I'm searching on my other monitor uh, for just a generic blue background. Um, that's kind of dark. That's kind of too light. I pretty much spend all of my days just looking at the perfect, trying to find the perfect image for every project that I work on. Um, all right, this looks good enough. So can I get this for free? Fingers crossed. Okay, so I've downloaded um, 
this other file. So all I have to do now is make sure this is selected. I can take my other file, drag and drop it, and it should replace it. There we go. This is super pixelated, <laughs> right? Because I just kind of ripped it off the internet. Um, but you probably want to get a high resolution image. Um, but this is now my blue background. So when I go to double click inside of here, now I can see I don't have to change every page. It's already been changed to that blue background. So let's go ahead. I'm pretty sure I put styles in here. Let's go to Windows Character Styles. Yeah, there we go. Um, so if I select a day, gold numbers. I don't know why it says gold, but if I double click, <coughs> excuse me, inside of here and I can change this, we'll just call these blue numbers, uh, blue. And over here for character color, we're going to change this to that blue that I really like. Uh, and then I'm going to say, okay. So now everything uh, that had that style applied to it, which it looks like was a lot of stuff, uh, is now blue. So I pretty much am already done with changing a lot of this. Now, maybe I wanna change the days of the week um, as well. I think the days of the week, are th they're on the master page. So anytime you click on something on any page and you can see like, I'm not able to edit that. I seem really like on, on these pages. It's usually because two things. One, if you go to object, sometimes you have to ungroup stuff if it's grouped together, or you might have to say unlock all on spreadsheet. Because sometimes uh, designers lock things. I'm not big into locking, uh, but sometimes I do, like, and I forget. Uh, so that could be the case. But in this case, if neither of those work, it's most likely because it's on the master page. So if we go over here to the master page and we select this, and where were my styles? Where are my styles? I just saw them. Uh, styles, character styles. Okay, so now we can see metallic days. So if I double click this, I can go over here to color. I could make that blue say okay and now everything is blue so same thing over here let's go down here so now everything is back to being blue now the only tough part here is you probably don't want all these lines to be pink um you're going to have to select this go over here and find that blue and i believe it will change it yeah so now everything is blue over here so now we have a blue planner because that was the color that we wanted to use. Um, and everything is bluish because maybe that's your font or your new color. Um, now the cover, let's go back to the cover. The cover you will have to change uh, manually. So over here to A master, that one's a little different. So you're gonna select this again and you're gonna drag and drop that image on top. It will just automatically replace it. Again, this is super pixelated. Um, so now when we go back to our cover, we can see that it has that new background. We can probably change this uh, so it's not rose gold, make it maybe a dark blue. We can change that type so it is white, so it goes a little better. We'll change this box down here too. So it is navy and then the type is white. So now we've made a blue desk pad, if you want. So there's a lot of options on here. Don't feel like you're stuck with whatever design was given to you. There are a lot of different things that you can change, so. I don't think there are any questions. I think it's because, I don't know, no one's here. <laughs> so um, let me know if you have any questions. That is everything for monthly. I'm going to end this now. I know it's a lot of time we're hanging out. And then we're gonna do the very last one, which is the daily. So I will see you again 